Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we were originally thinking that we were going to come to you from the Bias for Two South Lung. We had some technical difficulties getting a Wi-Fi signal down and that big steel shell. So what we're hoping to do is resolve that here over the next couple of days and bring that uh, really remarkable structure to you next week. We'll let you know. We'll post again when we're going to be able to do that because it is truly an amazing engineering uh, marvel of Bias for Two. But uh, what we'd like to do today is we're going to show you a little bit of the habitat. This is where the biospherians live when they were inside. And so my name is John Adams. I'm Deputy Director here at Biosphere 2. And welcome to the, uh, the Friday edition of Biosphere 2 Live. So why don't you join me inside the habitat and we're going to walk you up into one of their apartments uh, that they lived in. So this is the habitat, and uh, the habitat is roughly one-third of Biosphere 2. It has a couple of different levels, so there's a downstairs, there's sort of this mid-level here, there's a library that is the tallest point in Biosphere 2, and we're going to take you uh, up there one day as part of our Biosphere 2 live feed. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to walk up the hallway. There's some really cool pictures here on my left as I walk up that show what it was like when biospherians were living inside and who they were and some of the tasks and activities that they were doing, as well as there's some really interesting construction posts um, that show some early construction of Biosphere 2. So why don't you kind of join me, follow me up the hallway here. For those of you who haven't seen some of these pictures, there's some really good ones of uh, the original biospherian team standing on the beach. You know, this one here shows them going into the airlock. We talked about this earlier this week, and those airlocks were a really critical design feature to establish that remarkable seal uh, that Biosphere achieved when it was first constructed. Got some ocean pictures here. Um, again, that Biospherian team standing on a ridge that behind them with Biosphere 2. You know, this is one thing I think a lot of people forget is that uh, part of that original Biosphere team was a medical doctor, Ray Wolford. Um, he was a medical doctor from UCLA and he was a critical member of that team. And this was his lab in here. And so this picture shows what it looked like historically. We've converted it and we use this lab space now for instrumentation calibra and calibration inside the facility. So some of these pictures actually are really interesting. This gentleman is Tabor McCollum, and he was one of the original biospherians as well, and it shows him working in the lab. And that lab is actually just over here behind uh, this door. It's now our marine science lab, but this is where he did all of the analytics looking at the atmosphere inside Biosphere 2. Um, they would analyze for oxygen, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and many other trace gases on a regular basis. Because as you can imagine, when you're inside of a sealed environment, you are breathing in everything. And if there is something that is not suitable for your health, you're going to instantly know. You know, those are things that we just sort of take for granted outside because the atmosphere buffers and balances um, and dilutes everything to a level that a lot of times, unless it's really pronounced, we don't pick those things up. When you're inside bias for two, any little change you can almost instantly detect and that's one of the things the biospherians really said is they had a much greater appreciation for the connection to their environment when they were inside so you know one of the most common questions we get asked is you know what was it like when they were living inside how did they sleep? How did they eat their meals? And what we're hoping to do with these Biosphere Live posts is be able to bring you a little bit of that. Um, we know that you know everybody is limiting their societal uh, connections and having societal distancing, having to stay at home. Um, you know, in many parts of the country, 
Um, and so what we're hoping to do is, again, bring Biosphere 2 to you and to your living rooms or wherever you may be, um, and to all of those who would like to learn a little bit more. And then hopefully when all of this passes and we get back to some semblance of normalcy, we can have you guys out to Biosphere 2 to experience it firsthand for yourself. But again, my name is John Adams. Welcome to Friday's session of Biosphere 2 Live. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you into their apartment. Um, so we're looking through the window and if you remember, there were eight Biospherians, four men, four women. Uh, they were sealed inside the facility in September of 1991. And one of the places that they really sort of just cherished was their apartments because they could get away from everyone. As much as they liked their team, um, you know, they did like to have some solitude and get away from folks. And so we're going to walk you in and show you some of the pieces of the apartment. So why don't you follow me around this door here. So as you can imagine, they had a restroom, so they would share these. Um, so there are five restrooms, again, 10 apartments, but remember there were only eight Biospherians. Originally they had thought possibly about having a 10 person crew. They scaled that down to eight, and even with the eight, and we'll talk about a little bit more in one of our future posts, um, they still didn't have enough food to support those eight people when they were inside. So, you know, this is the apartment. Um, so it has sort of a downstairs living area. Uh, this part, this apartment has stuff in here from a guy by the name of Barrett Zobel. So remember, there were two missions. There was the first one where eight people were sealed inside. There was then a second mission where we had seven people inside. And one of those folks was a gentleman by the name of Barrett Zobel. These are some of his paintings that he did when he was inside of here. Um, you can see though right here, they had a TV, they had a stereo. Um, for those kids that are watching, you know, this is a cassette tape. I know those things are probably foreign to you, but for mom and dad, we, we still remember those things. Uh, you know, an old TV. I don't know if you guys have seen a TV, but look at how big they used to be. Um, so, you know, today all of our flat screens and everything uh, are much refined. But remember, this is all late 80s, early techno eight, late 80s, early 90s technology in the system. Uh, this was one of the original jumpsuits, and so before the Biospherians left, they uh, autographed this for one of the gentlemen, uh, Baron Zabo, and he's donated this back to us so we can show you one of their original suits. Um, now, everybody asked where did they sleep, and so, you know, they weren't sleeping underneath the banana tree in the rainforest. They would sleep in their apartment, and so up these stairs here, uh, you have an overhead loft, uh, and that had um, a twin bed up there, and so that's where they would go and sleep. And each of them, when they were inside, they would customize the apartment just like you do your bedroom or your home uh, to fit their personality and their uh, desires and comforts that they felt were important. Um, and again, this was, from what they tell us, was a really important place just to be able to get away and not have or minimize that interaction. So as much as they were dependent on one another when they were inside, they really cherished the time away they had in their individual apartments. Um, and so this particular apartment uh, looks over right now what we call LEO, the Landscape Evolution Observatory. You heard a little bit about that earlier this week, but remember historically this was the farm area. So many of the apartments overlooked the former farm area. And again, that's where they spent almost all of their time, was in the farm area trying to get that system to produce enough nutrients um, and food for them so that they weren't continuously hungry. So again, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope everybody is safe and well in this, this time uh, that we're all dealing with this pandemic. And we're going to come again to you next week on Monday, and we've got a great lineup all of next week where we're gonna take you up in the rainforest and on our bosun's chair. Uh, we're gonna have you in the kitchen and other locations inside Bias for Two, and we'll be posting our schedule and what we're going to be doing each day um, in the coming time. So again, thank you very much. Again, hope everybody is safe and we'll see you again next week.